Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be concluding our lecture series on H.P. Lovecraft and the central thematic core of his works. We started out with this consideration of cosmicism that we developed in our synchronous class, and then through a series of asynchronous lectures, we looked at such things as his repudiation and rejection of religious beliefs, the underlying reasons for that rejection, the way that plays out in his fiction, and then we also looked at uh, the ways in which in his works and in his own xenophobic perspective on the world, uh, the United States civilization itself were all um, sort of decaying away under the influence of degenerate infiltration and subversion. In this video lecture, we're going to be looking at a central theme of his work, that being tradition as a bulwark. A bulwark is a kind of defensive rampart or some kind of defensive structure that you use to hold off your enemies. For Lovecraft, tradition itself was the bulwark, was the defense against the demons of unplumbed space, the chaotic understanding of our place in the universe, the mire of insanity and madness that roiled outside of the, uh, the terrestrial sphere, and also against the cultural and genetic influences of foreign forces that could enter into the country and start to break it down. So when we think about Lovecraft's universe, both his conceptual universe as he perceived the real world, and also the universe that he constructs in his fiction, we had this little placid of island, island of ignorance that we discussed from the Call of Cthulhu. And it is constantly beset, it's constantly threatened by the vast waves of chaos and uncertainty, the unknown, the meaningless cosmos beyond us. It's constantly threatened by the possibility that it will be swallowed up by those illimitable gulfs and waves of the black ocean of chaos beyond us. So the little island of civility and sanity that doesn't actually exist, it's something that we invent for ourselves, it's something that we construct for ourselves to try to hold off all of that chaos. The little bastion of civilization is under threat of being obliterated by the realization through scientific inquiry and a developing rationalism, the discovery of our true place in the universe. But it's also under threat from all these foreign influences. One of the main ways in which civilization and an individual human being can defend themselves against these threats is through the use of tradition. Lovecraft recognizes intellectually, or believes intellectually, that tradition is ultimately as meaningless as anything else that human beings can invent to try to impose meaning on the world. But it's a comforting fiction, and it's the comforting fiction to which he appeals as a way to defend against that chaos, to stand against it. In the same way that traditional beliefs in gods or devils are comforting to human beings because they allow us to impose sense and morality and rationality on the, a chaotic and purposeless universe, a universe without morals. Um, so too can we use traditional beliefs about anything, things that we have inherited from our ancestors, things that connect us to the past and give us the sensation that we're grounded. Think back to the narrator in the Orla and how he views tradition, those profound and delicate roots that attach a man to the soil, to peasant intimations, to the ways of being, living, and speaking. Lovecraft views tradition in much the same way. Tradition itself is a kind of bulwark or a defense against all that chaos. So long as we hold fast to something that seems secure, that still is just an invention, it's still something that we've inherited and has no inherent value, we can stave off this chaos. We can have something to cling on to. It gives us a kind of uh, false hope, the kind of false hope that we need to stay sane and to stay alive. Well, we, as I say here, while away our meaningless and insignificant lives on in this little island of ignorance. All traditions offer people a subjective and pointedly false sense of meaning and purpose in the universe. And when we look to H.P. Lovecraft stories, tradition, the tradition of our, the character's ancestors, the tradition of the connection between family members, as in, well, the narrator and his great-granduncle carrying on his work, um, and the traditions of civilizations and societies and races give us this sense of defense. So long as we can cling on to that, we can maintain the fiction that things are meaningful. So what we have here is a complex interweaving of fundamentally <clears throat> incongruous themes and beliefs. Right? Tradition is a bulwark against chaos. It, Lovecraft recognizes that it's not such, but it's the only thing that can seem to stave off the realities reflected in his other major themes of cosmicism, uh, civilization under threat, and the dangerous sort of infiltration of uh, religious sentiment 
This video is going to be the last of the asynchronous lectures that are posted on YouTube. From this point forward, we'll be looking at a variety of synchronous lessons on the thing and on your poetry presentations.